the book of Daniel. This is an introduction to the book of Daniel. To listen to this book of the Bible, go to playlists or enter Holy Bible the Prophets at Christendom. Thank you. In summary, this book concerns Daniel an exile in Babylon and his visions of the future. Part 1 in chapters 1 to 6, we have Daniel and his friends at the Babylonian court. In part 2, chapters 7 to 12, we have Daniel's visions. And some best known passages are Nebuchadnezzar's dream in chapter 2, the fiery furnace in chapter 3, Belshazzar's feast in chapter 5, Daniel in the lion's den, chapter 6, and Daniel's prayer in chapter 9. The book of Daniel then falls into two parts. The first six chapters relate to historical events in Babylon, spanning the years of the nation's exile from 605 to 537 BC. See chapter 1 verse 1 and chapter 10 verse 1. Two languages are used, the central core from chapter 2 verse 4 to chapter 7 verse 28 is in Aramaic, the rest in Hebrew. No one knows the reason for this. Although, according to the text, the book of Daniel belongs to the 6th century BC, most scholars do not believe the book was written then. They opt for a 2nd century BC writer, drawing on well-known stories and adding the visions to bring things up to date. His purpose in writing was to give God's people new heart at a time when the nation was under great threat. The issues underlying this position are complex. They relate mainly to questions of history or people and events not known from any other source and the use of two languages. It is possible to argue the early date for part one and a later date and author for part two. The crucial point is whether the kind of detail in chapter 11, which seems to relate so clearly to the time of Antiochus IV in the second century, is to be regarded as prophecy made 400 years in advance. As people of faith, we should not have difficulty with God prophesying through Daniel, events 400 years ahead. But at some point in the journey through the book of Daniel, we will fall into one camp or another. For whether one or two people were the author of Daniel has been debated since it was first read. Like the revelation of Jesus Christ, otherwise known as simply Revelation, or the revelation of John of Patmos. All details and names, times and seasons, are explicitly penned by John as he sees them before him. And he writes down all that he is instructed to write. It is certainly credible that Daniel was likewise the only author of the book which bears his name. Daniel has a historical setting and is concerned with history, but not a history in the same way as, for example, the books of Kings. Nor is it quite like the other prophets who speak to the people in the name of God. It is one of the earliest examples, the only one in the Old Testament, of the genre known as apocalyptic writing, setting out a world view of history within the great purposes of God, See the New Testament book of Revelation. The main thrust of the book is clear. God, the God of Israel, is sovereign ruler of the world and at all times and in all places. For his people this means one thing, total loyalty to him. No matter how powerful the opposing forces, God will in due time, his own time, defeat them all. From the text we learn that Daniel was a Judean exile in the court of Babylon, taken there as a boy a few years earlier than Ezekiel and the first main batch of exiles. He belonged to a noble, possibly royal family 
and was exceptionally able and intelligent. Daniel's role in the stories which make up the first part of the book is as much that of statesman as of prophet. And lastly, in chapter 12, Daniel is the first Old Testament book to speak explicitly of the resurrection of individual people. See 12 verse 2. When that day comes and all the terrible troubles are past, those who have shown themselves wise by their faithful obedience to God will rise to shine like stars forever. All evil will be done away with. But as for times, those are in God's hand. Not even Daniel understands this. See, chapter 12, verses 6 to 8. Not even Daniel understands this. So a cautious approach to these matters may still be the wisest course. End of introduction.